The Ambassador of the Republic of Korea to Fiji, His Excellency Yang Kupak. The United Nations uh, Resident Coordinator, His Excellency Sanaka Samarsina. Esteemed representatives from the Diplomatic Corps, UN organizations and civil society. Members of the National Disaster Man Management Council, senior government officials, I do acknowledge the presence of the two assistant ministers, permanent secretaries, divisional commissioners, and all government agencies that are represented here today. Invited guests, friends and colleagues, Nisambula Binaka, Namaste. And uh, thank you for joining us today to commemorate World Humanitarian Day. Today, we come together to honor humanitarian workers in Fiji and around the world who are risking their lives every day to serve humanitarian cause. We also pay tribute to humanitarian workers who have lost their lives on the front of disasters, wars, and conflicts. The Humanitarian Day was established on the anniversary of the 2003 bombing of the United Nations headquarters in Baghdad, in which 22 humanitarians and UN staff lost their lives. And over the years, this day has evolved to highlight different aspects of humanitarian action including aid and health workers, mobilizing people from around the world to advocate for the broader humanitarian cause. Ladies and gentlemen, globally in 2021, more than 468 workers were victims of attack. More than 140 out of that 460 were aid workers and were killed during these attacks. This was the highest number recorded since 2013. During the same period, 238 workers were injured and 117 were kidnapped. So far this year, in 2022, 168 humanitarians have been attacked, leading to 44 fatalities. But here in the Pacific context, we encounter more of climate-related emergencies and disasters that bring together various humanitarians to offer support in their own unique ways. We truly honor the commitment, bravery, and sacrifice of all humanitarian aid workers who contribute every day to save lives, to saving lives and uphold the dignity of people in crisis. Therefore, to begin, I kindly request that we rise and observe a minute of silence to pay tribute to humanitarian workers around the world who have lost their lives while carrying out their duties. So, Sakrakian, when the two that commander, na loman in dona minute go, men da na baka na numi rekina, oira er baka langai, en na nonra ngano ni bengarabi, en na bugni langa kena bevel boluti er asutaba. Thank you. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our shared commitment to our people who rely on life-saving assistance and protection for their survival that brings us together as family of humanitarian organizations in Fiji. It is in this spirit that we are all gathered to celebrate today. 
This year's theme, It Takes a Village, brings focus on how aid workers come together in a collective effort to alleviate extreme need. This theme pays tribute to those who dedicate their lives to helping others. Just like the saying, it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village of humanitarians working together with affected communities to bring help and hope to people caught up in crisis. We all have an important role to play in this collective effort. Ladies and gentlemen, it is evident that disaster risk is taking on new shapes and sizes in every passing year. Risk drivers and consequences are multiplying and are increasingly complicated. This underlines the need to have a commensurate systemic response with national and local strategies for disaster response and disaster risk reduction that are fit for purpose and accounts for various capacities brought into the context by the family of humanitarian actors. The staggering rise in climate-related disasters over the last 20 years is also commentary on the need to strengthen disaster risk governance for the entire range of natural, natural hazards and man-made hazards including related environmental, technological, and biological hazards and risks. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I am pleased to announce that in this year's World Humanitarian Day commemoration, we will also witness the official launch of the Strengthening National and Community Resilience to Disaster and the Displacement Risks Project through the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, with the funding support from the Korean International Cooperation Agency, or COICA. The project primarily focuses on building four model evacuation centers, retrofit some existing evacuation centers, conduct trainings in the communities, and finalize evacuation center management SOPs and related documents. These newly built evacuation centers will be multi-purpose that will also provide opportunities for secondary economic activity using a participatory approach. It aims to promote social empowerment and undertake financial literacy training based on community preferences and pre-existing market assessments. The main objective of this project is to strengthen national and community resilience to disaster and displacement risks in Fiji through a participatory approach with communities, government, authorities, and first responders. This in itself is a manifestation of this year's theme for World Humanitarian Day, It Takes a Village, to ensure successful implementation and sustainability of projects and build community resilience. I am indeed honored to have the presence of uh, our esteemed guests from the Embassy of the Republic of uh, Korea in Fiji and the Office of the United Nations uh, Resident Coordinator to celebrate World Humanitarian Day and also witness with the official launching of this much-awaited project. Thank you once again, Excellencies. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to both acknowledge and express our sincere gratitude to all who have gathered here today and to all those that participate in humanitarian action in Fiji. This includes representatives from the civil society organizations, the Red Cross movement, all levels of government, donors, UN, faith-based organizations, private sector, and many others. Thank you for your immense dedication, flexibility, and resilience. I would also like to acknowledge COICA, IOM, UNFPA, and UNOCHA for co-sponsoring today's event. With the increase in complex and interdependent disasters, we need to be prepared all year round, rather than just 
in the predicted cyclone period. There is a need to continue to strengthen disaster risk governance to manage disaster risks with clear vision, competence, legislation, policies, plans, guidelines, funding, and coordination across all sectors in a manner which takes account of the increasingly systemic nature of disaster risk. Managing complex risks, complex risks cannot be done by a single agency, but must be a whole of government and whole of society undertaking. Addressing multiple disasters at once, as we did with COVID and the recent disaster uh, response, requires a great level of coordination between line ministries and partners at the national and local levels. The government, let me assure you, through the NDMO, is committed to the people of Fiji in strengthening our response capacity. Risk-informed development and solidifying our overall integrated approaches and coordination mechanisms accounting for all humanitarian actors, making sure that our linkages and cooperation with communities, civil society, the Red Cross, the United Nations, and other regional partners and all levels of government are strong, identifying shortfalls and learning, correcting, and strengthening as we progress into the future. As we commemorate the World Humanitarian Day, the government of Fiji reiterates our commitment in advancing inclusivity, giving equal consideration to persons with disabilities and promoting gender equality and women empowerment by strengthening their participation in humanitarian as well as other leadership roles. Let us work more closely together so that we can be better prepared to respond to emergencies, meet immediate humanitarian needs during crisis, while at the same time working to achieve sustainable solutions and risk-informed development. I do encourage us all to visit the booths to learn more about the work that is done by the ministry and other partners. Apart from the booth, I, on behalf of CATD, our host today, I also encourage everyone to take some time to visit the solar-powered cargo vessel located up the road. This, uh, this uh, vessel uh, is uh, aimed to transport cargo to maritime islands in an environment-friendly and sustainable manner. And should you wish to visit, please uh, go to the CTA, CATD booth uh, for a guided tour. Yang nama kami mengikuti waktu beli mandi liburan dan berikan kewenangan yang benar. Ah, with those words, I wish all of us a happy World Humanitarian Day, and bina kau lebu dan lebar. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Bina kau.